Wouldn't it be nice if you could have the amazing benefits of level 2 autonomy wherever you go? What if you could get out of your autonomous car at the airport, fly across the country, and then have the same hands-free driving convenience in your rental car upon landing? I'm sure many Tesla owners wish they could bring autopilot with them while air traveling. Lucky for me, I don't own a Tesla. I own a very common vehicle, the Toyota Corolla. I also happen to own the next best thing to Tesla Autopilot, which is a Comma 2 with Open Pilot. So today, I'll try to answer the question that no one else besides me was asking. Can Open Pilot travel with you? I recently flew to Florida and picked up a very average 2020 Corolla LE rental car. So how difficult is it to add OpenPilot to the rental? I decided to document the process and share my experience for anyone interested in trying this out for themselves. The first step was to get out of the parking garage and away from the very helpful rental car agents and stop at the nearest location for a quick comma two setup. All right, so I have a new Corolla rental car and we're gonna install OpenPilot on it. I don't have a lot of time, 11 o'clock right now just landed in Fort Lauderdale Florida got about an hour drive south so I'm gonna do a time lapse we'll see how long it takes to install open pilot on a rental car and then we'll get to driving so of course here I have everything I need to install open pilot there's the comma 2 have the USB cable and plastic mount Another mount, just in case, because we'll possibly be losing one temporarily in the rental car. The Ethernet cable to connect to Comma Power. Of course, here is the switch with the uh, harness cable and the Comma Power. That's it. So let's get this stuff installed. It's now 11:05. If you want to see a more detailed walkthrough of this whole process, be sure to check out my OpenPilot installation video linked above and in the description. The most invasive part of the process is just removing the camera cover above the rearview mirror. If you're comfortable doing that, this whole thing is super easy. So we have open pilot booting up. I'm just gonna go ahead and start the car. Didn't have too much trouble with it. I had to use a different mount and it's actually pretty crooked. So it'll be interesting to see how it drives with crappy mount placement. Anyway, you can see it's now 1114. So that took me less than 10 minutes. And I have the comma two mounted. I'm sorry, the comma power mounted. Cable ran. Pretty stealth. You can't see anything. Clean install. We're still booting up, but uh, uh, it's compiling because I updated before I left. But I'll let you guys know when we're ready to go. Okay, so we now have open pilot. It's hard to see because of the exposure, but fix that. I have open pilot up and running. No dash errors. Took almost as long for it to boot up a fresh uh, Git clone than it took for me to install it. So I could have started driving but I figured I'd wait just in case I had any technical difficulties but let's go on the road. So after just doing a quick calibration process, OpenPilot worked flawlessly. And this rental car was quite different from my Corolla that I own personally. It had a definite alignment issue. The steering wheel was crooked. It felt like it had quite a bit of toe out. It got terrible fuel economy for some reason the whole time I drove it. And uh, OpenPilot still drove the car just like I would. It, the lane keeping worked, 
I used the laneless model for the majority of my time that I was there and I'm just really glad I brought it along because overall I did a lot of driving on this trip. I drove a full tank of gas out of the car so probably at least 350-400 miles almost and without open pilot a lot of that driving would have been really just a slog and not very fun so it was a lot nicer to just be able to enjoy the views chill focus on the important things and let open pilot do all the work after driving all over south florida and coming to the end of my journey i decided to record my final thoughts on the experience so i'll leave you with that So I've been driving with my Kama 2 and my rental car for a few days now and I figured I would give my thoughts on it and tell you whether I recommend it or not. So first off, if you have a lot of driving to do and you're going to be renting the car for several days, then I would say, and it's something you've considered doing, I would say go ahead and try it because it was a lot easier to install than thought and I was in the process of videoing on it which you know took made it overall a little bit longer and uh, hopefully the uninstall will be just as easy but I'll film that when the time comes so you'll see that later but yeah it I think it helped me it helps because I'm in a car I'm not familiar with in an area I'm not familiar with and I'm doing a lot of driving and there's a lot of navigation involved, so I'm looking for places to eat or gas stations. I'm always having to look at the navigation and put in a destination. And if you get turned around, you just immediately need to reroute. So having just a little bit of the stress of driving alleviated is a big benefit, I think. So I've also seen A lot of people get overwhelmed when they're in a new area driving and get confused or get lost or get turned around. So having something that you're familiar with to just help uh, is great. And I've seen uh, Tesla owners complain about when they have to go rent a car and they lose all the features, all the stuff they're comfortable with. They don't autopilot uh, once you've experienced open pilot or autopilot or other systems like that sometimes it feels like quite a downgrade to go to just a base car so the fact that you can just put your comma 2 in a little bag this is what I carry everything to install it in just a small little you know bag in my luggage what there's no other system or product out there that can enable you to do that. Like just, I mounted it, it wasn't precise. I didn't measure anything. I just eyeballed it, stuck it to the windshield. It's been working great for four or five days now. So, so yeah, hopefully this has given you guys a little bit of insight into what it's like. I was the guinea pig. I know a few other people have probably done it, but I figured I would document it for you. And it's been fun being in a new area, driving some different roads that I normally probably wouldn't drive with open pilot. It's been been a nice experience. And like whenever I stop, I just take it out of the windshield, like at night at the hotel, so I'm not worried about theft or anything like that in familiar areas. So it's it's great, it works, and uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. As you can see, I haven't really had to do much. I don't think I've touched the wheel for the few minutes I've been talking, so I'm getting close to my destination. So that's it for now. Okay guys, so I've came to the end of my trip and I've got to quickly remove my Kama 2 and all the hardware 
So I'm going to do that right now, and we'll see how long it takes. It's 1028. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, turn off the comma 2. So you can just reach up here and hit power off. Let me power the car off first. I'll power off the comma 2. All right, let's get started. All right, last thing, removing this. Let's see. We can get it. The grip under it is not a credit card. Usually it works. Now I've got an old one that I don't care about. We'll start using this to get an edge under here. Okay. So there, the mount came off pretty cleanly. And again, same thing. That was uh, less than 10 minutes. I'm going to kind of roll this adhesive off just so I can have a clean surface to reapply. And then I don't have a sticky mount to take with me. Anyway, that's it. We've uh, completely uninstalled OpenPilot from a vehicle in eight minutes. So I'm heading to the airport now to fly home and put the Comma 2 in my car before I leave the airport. I have a spare relay and harness kit, so my car at home has everything hooked up. And obviously when the Comma 2 is unplugged, the relay switches it to the stock system so you don't get any alerts or errors or anything you can drive it like normally so all i have to do when i get back home get in my car is just plug in the comma 2. so if you had multiple vehicles you could just buy a few of the relays and harness kits for those vehicles and then you can just move comma 2s between them really easily so. all right that's it I drove the final leg of my journey to the airport using the terrible stock lane keeping and returned my rental back to the fleet just as I had got it. This experience has really made me appreciate just how easy it is to make what would otherwise be an ordinary car into an advanced AI driving assistant. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always leave your questions in the comments below and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.